Now we are going to start with the topic that is basis. Now, as you are already familiar with the acid concept, so see how, how the bases are differentiated from acids. So, according to Arrhenius, the bases were stated as, that means the substances, when dissolved in water, produce hydroxide ions is called as base. Suppose, suppose I have a beaker in which I have water, right? What I am doing, I am adding a certain substance to water. Suppose uh, I am adding, uh, you can say, the sodium hydroxide to water, right? So, when we just dissolve sodium hydroxide in water, so what happens? It gets dissociated to form Na positive and OH negative. So, what does Arrhenius say actually? He says that any substance which when dissolved in water produce these ions as you can see hydroxide ions they are called as bases. So, according to Arrhenius like if somebody is going to ask you about bases you will state that according to Arrhenius because see there are different concepts uh, like the Lewis concept and the bronston lorry concept and all these concepts uh, just uh, you can say define bases in different terms. So, at your level you need to know about the Arrhenius concept. So, if somebody asks you about the basis, so just say that uh, according to the Arrhenius theory, bases are some uh, like bases are those substances which when dissolved in water produce hydroxide ion that is the OH negative ion, right. Like in acid we did, the substances which when dissolved in water produce hydronium ion are called as acid. Likewise, the substances which when dissolved in water produce hydro, uh, this thing hydroxide ion are called as bases. Right. So, in both the cases, we need to dissolve a substance in water. So, keep in mind, uh, according to Arrhenius, uh, we can come to know about the nature of acid and base only when we dissolve that given substance that is the acid or a base in water. So, the bases are, uh, you can say somehow, the substances which when dissolved in water produce hydroxide ions. Now, we are just looking for its preparation. Before we do preparation, I would just want to tell you one thing. See, some bases are soluble in water and some bases are insoluble in water, right? So, the bases which are soluble in water are called by another term that is the alkali. This I am telling you because see uh, you come across different terms, you come across bases, you come across alkalis. So, you should know what is the difference that exists between the base and an alkali. So, that means all alkalis are bases only, right? So, alkalis or what are alkalis? Bases which are soluble in water are called as alkali and the bases which are insoluble in water are called as bases only, right? So, we can say alkali is a subclass of uh, the bases, right? So, all alkalis are bases but all bases are not alkalis because they are not on like that means the all bases are not soluble in water because we come across many bases which are insoluble right. So, the alkali, the alkaline term means one and the same and that indicate the, those bases which are soluble in water. Now, just look at the board how we can just prepare the bases. First method is by direct combination. That means, we will be direct combining the, uh, you can say the substances which will give rise to the base. So, just look at the board, what are those substances which are formed by the direct uh, combination. Suppose, we have Na and we just add oxygen to it. We know any substance when react with oxygen give rise to oxide. So, obviously, what is going to form? Oxide is going to form. And as you can see, it is a sodium oxide. So, you should know that sodium oxide and sodium is a metal. So, we can say it is a, in general, it is a metal oxide. All metal oxides except aluminum oxide and zinc oxides are basic in nature. So, that means these are also bases because when we will dissolve this kind of uh, substance in water, it will just produce uh, like uh, dissociate to produce the hydroxide ions. So, that means the metal oxides are also regarded as the bases. So, they can just be formed by reacting the metal with the oxygen. Another method. By reacting metal with water, right, by reacting metal with water. See, suppose I have a metal again sodium, I am just reacting it with water. 
So we know when metal reacts with water it, uh, or any substance which reacts with water, it combines with the hydroxide ion. So this is what it is doing here. Na is combining with the hydroxide ions. So that leads to the formation of NaOH and along with that hydrogen gas is produced. As you can see, it has the OH ion. So that means when dissolved in water, it will produce the hydroxide ion. That, that means it is also a base. See, in both cases what you have seen, in this example, it contains the hydroxide ions so by looking at it that it contains the hydroxide ion it must be clear in your mind that yes the when dissolved in water it is uh, definitely it is going to produce the hydroxide ion but in the first example that is Na2O because you don't get to see uh, like uh, there is an oxide ion but there is no hydroxide ion so that doesn't mean that it is not a it is not regarded as a base so just keep in mind see the when any substance dissolved in water produce hydroxide ion is called as base whether uh, initially it contains the hydroxide ion or whether it doesn't contain the hydroxide ion it is not a you can say a definite criteria to act as a base so as you can see this is also basic in nature and this is also a strong base so that indicates that OH is not a criteria uh, uh, or you can say OH is not regarded as, as a definite uh, group which must be present in a substance to just act as a base so this is the these are the two preparations third we can just prepare it by reacting metal oxide with water right so when we will react metal oxide suppose again I am taking the sodium oxide I am just reacting it with water and we know that any substance which react in water with react with water just criss cross with the hydroxide ion so it leads to the formation of NaOH but no H2 is evolved just keep in mind when you are reacting oxide with water you do not get any kind of hydrogen gas but when you react metal with water you do get uh, this thing the hydrogen gas so this is how then that we can prepare the basis right now we are just going to classify bases as we just classified the acids we are just going to classify the bases now right so uh, just look at the board so it's classification so firstly bases are classified on the properties that is suppose we say the strength of the base so first classification we are doing on the basis of strength of base when we talk of strength, strength means the ability of a base to release the hydroxide ion when it is dissolved in water. Obviously, the strength is this, right? So that means the ability of a base to release the hydroxide ion when it is dissolved in water. So on this basis, it is just divided into two categories. One is strong base, other is weak base. Right. So as we did classified the acids on the basis of strength into strong acid and weak acid, likewise we just uh, differentiate the base into strong base and weak base on the basis of strength. So the difference here lies is that that uh, strong acid was that which uh, completely dissociates to produce the hydronium ion when dissolved in water. Similarly, it happens with the base, but the difference is that that it produced the hydronium ion and it produced the hydroxide ion. So that means suppose I'm just differentiating the strong base with the weak, weak base so strong base is something which completely uh, you can say completely dissociates or you can say ionize to give all its hydroxide ions for example if I have this hydroxide and if I say it act as a strong base that how I can show it that means when it will get dissociated it will fully uh, get dissociated producing the A positive and OH negative ion that means in solution I'm, we are going to get after dissolving AOH in water we are going to get A positive and OH negative and in the whole solution we won't be able to find this AOH molecule because it has been completely completely dissociated to produce A positive and hydroxide ion. So if this kind of thing you get to see in water, so that means the strength is too high and it, it acts as a strong base. And when we talk of weak base, so weak base is that which gets partially ionized which gets partially ionized that means it uh, it it do breaks but it uh, doesn't completely breaks it just partially dissociate to produce hydroxide ion suppose again I'm taking a general example suppose I have a base that is AOH if I say that it acts as a weak base then what uh, is uh, what is happening to it or what kind of ions it is forming when it is dissolved in water so what we are going to get 
it will just uh, dissociate to form a positive and hydroxide ion and these ions are also have the ability to just form united form the AOH molecule. So there is an equilibrium between the ionized ions and the unionized molecule. So that means this is getting dissociated to form this and uh, at the same time they are also just uh, combining with each other to form the unionized molecule. So that means in the solution we will get to see this, this and moreover we will get to see this undissociated molecule as well. So that means it gets partially ionized, it doesn't get completely ionized because if it has been completely ionized then we would have uh, not seen this AOH molecule but as I have told you we are getting this AOH molecule also in water so this indicates it partially ionized. So when any base when dissolved in water get, uh, gets partially ionized so that means it is a weak base and if it gets completely ionized it acts as a strong base. So when we we'll, uh, look for the examples. So suppose the alkali metal hydroxides, this NaOH, KOH, they are strong bases and these ammonium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, etc., they are regarded as a weak base. So keep in mind all alkali, alkali metal hydroxides are regarded as a strong base and uh, when we talk about the alkaline earth metals, they are not so strong as compared to the alkali metal hydroxide. So this is how we are just going to classify the base on the basis of strength. Now, we have a term that is the acidity, like we had a term basicity for an acid, so likewise we have the term acidity for indicating the uh, basic strength. So acidity, acidity of bases means the number of hydroxide ions produced when base is just added to water. So that means when we are adding base to water, so what number of hydroxide ion which we get to see is this indicates the acidity of the bases. See basicity is for acids and acidity is for bases right. So likewise in the, in the acid one, in the basicity one what you were doing, you were just uh, indicating that number of hydronium ion produced when acid is just dissolved in water. Likewise we have the number of hydroxide ion produced when base is just added to water and on the basis we just classify uh, the bases into different categories like we have monoacidic base, we have diacidic base, we have triacidic base or polyacidic base indicating the number of hydroxide ions produced when they are dissolved in water. So just uh, do you have any example in your mind which indicates like which uh, in which the base carries only one hydroxide ion and that gets dissociated to produce that obviously see it is NaOH. So in NaOH what you get to see that one uh, sodium hydroxide molecule carry only one hydroxide ion. So that means when it will get dissociated it will produce one hydroxide ion. So that means the base which when dissolved in water uh, like uh, produce one hydroxide ion per molecule that is called as the monoacidic base. And when we talk about the diacidic that means uh, we have to uh, like the all the bases which carry two hydroxide, uh, hydroxide ions in its one molecule they are regarded as diacidic base. So just let us think of that which base can act as this. So yes, MgOH hold twice because in one MgOH hold twice molecule how many hydroxide ions do you get to see? Two, right. So that means when we are dissolving water we are going to get the two hydroxide ions. Just look at the board. It will be Mg2 positive and you will have 2OH negative. So these two hydroxide ions indicates the diacidic base. And when we talk about triacidic, suppose we have ALOH whole thrice. So see, you get to see that one molecule carries three hydroxide ions. So when it will get dissociated, it will form three hydroxide ions. So it is said to be tri, uh, this thing, the triacidic base. So likewise, uh, depending upon the number of hydroxide ions they contain and the number of hydroxide ions that they will be just giving when they will be dissolved in water, they are called as the acidity of the bases and accordingly we call that base as triacidic base, diacidic base or polyacidic base likewise, right. So this is uh, somehow you can say the properties 
and moreover like we had uh, the acid on the basis of water content we had the concentrated acid and a weak acid likewise we have here the concentrated base and the weak base so the, in, you can say that uh, a base which contain more amount of water is said to be a dilute base and which contain the less amount of water is said to be concentrated base now we we'll look for the uh, physical properties now as you are all familiar that what the, our bases actually according to our Indians, how they can be prepared, what are the classifications on which properties you can just classify bases. Now we are looking for the physical properties. Now when we are talking about the physical properties, so first of all we should know that how, the, how we feel when we touch bases, right. So you should know they are actually slippery in touch, so that means bases are slippery in touch right and they give the feeling of they have the or you can say they give soapy feeling so they are soap like they are soap like so they are slippery and they are actually soap like and when we talk about their ionization so yes they get ionized and like the degree of ionization like if uh, it is true that when we uh, pass electric current or whatever when we add it to some other substance they do uh, they get ionized to the uh, producing the ions but though the degree of ionization is different for the different base according to its strength that whether it is a strong base or it is a weak base but they uh, they, uh, they definitely get ionized but the degree of uh, dissociation is different for different base. Uh, next property is solubility. See, most of the uh, this thing, the hydroxides are not soluble in water, except the alkali metal hydroxides and the ammonium hydroxide. They are soluble. These are the exceptions which are soluble in water. Apart from these, the, that is the alkali metal hydroxide and the ammonium hydroxide. All other hydroxides are insoluble in water. So I'll just write an exception here, right? So, the exception is that alkali metal hydroxides and ammonium hydroxides are just soluble in water, all others are insoluble in water. Now, we will just see the action on the uh, this thing, the indicators. So, when we talk of the indicators, suppose I am talking about the litmus, we are talking about the methyl orange, we are talking about the phenophylline. So, what, what is the actually the action of base on these indicators? So, the bases actually turn red litmus blue and when we were talking about the acids what they were doing they were convert, they were just uh, you can say the cha changing the color of the blue litmus to red but in case of base they are changing the red litmus to blue and methyl orange which is originally the orange in color they are just changing into pink uh, this thing the yellow color and when we talk about phenophylline they change phenophylline into pink so this is actually the effect of the base on the indicators right so now as you are familiar with what are the bases actually how they can be prepared or how they are classified according to the strength and according to the number of hydroxides ion that is the acidity of the bases and you are almost familiar with the physical properties so i'll just recall the physical properties again they are slippery in touch they are soap like they do ionization or you can say they do ionize when they are dissolved in certain substance or when electric current is passed but the degree of dissociation is different for the uh, different base depending upon the strength that is for the strong base the ionization is uh, you can say the degree of ionization is high and uh, when we talk about the weak base the degree of ionization is low right so uh, when we talk about the solubility as i told you see the solubility factor is very important because it is actually linked with this uh, alkali thing as i told you the bases which are soluble in water are called as alkali so that means as i've told you they are almost insoluble except the alkali metal hydroxide and the ammonium hydroxides which are soluble in water so these are the one which are going to act as alkali actually and when we talk of the indicators, so as you know that indicators are certain substances which bring about change in their color when we add certain substance to it, right. So we have got a lot of indicators, we will take up a separate topic for that. 
for this instead I am just using the uh, normal indicators. So, I am just telling you the effect of base on these normal indicators. So, on litmus what they are doing they are turning red litmus blue and uh, what, what is their action on methyl orange which is orange actually. So, when they are treated with base methyl orange turns yellow. And when we talk about phenolphthalein, which is originally colorless, so when we add base to it, its color changes to pink. Now we will be taking up the chemical properties.